But, uh, let's greet the person. Let's look at the person beside us. He said, good morning. Yeah. So while the kids are going their way to the Sunday school, yeah. So there more seat, there's more seats here in the front. So if you can just, um, yeah, and while the kids are going upstairs, yeah. So again, yeah, and we can move here. So make sure you have someone beside you. So if you're sitting alone, call a friend and tell that friend, hey, come sit with me. I need someone to punch. I know, no, not punch. Okay. So I'll be, uh, we're still in the series of putting Jesus first. So again, 2023. Okay, so for this morning, I'll be showing a lot of pictures. So again, oh, let me check again. Oh, can we move here? Uh, sino ba? Ate March, can we help them, the people move forward? So, kasi I need you to talk to each other. So find someone you can talk to. So I'll be showing a lot of pictures. And you have to discuss with your seatmate, with your, uh, with your body beside you, what is in the picture. Okay, 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 okay. Yan. Yeah, okay. So you have someone beside you, okay? Okay. Uh, you're my you're my activity partner to this morning. Okay? Okay? Okay. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah, okay. Uh, key of G only because last anniversary we're so excited we have to do it in key of A. So this one, yeah, no, no, no. key of G. Okay. Ano to? Ayan, sorry. Thank you, Sister B. Oh, nakadress mo, pinaglakad. Sorry. Okay. So, discuss with the person beside you. What can we observe from the picture? Okay. So, uh, it's your moment. Ayan. Ayan. You talk to one another. What can you see? You analyze. Okay. Later, I will get a report. Uh, <laughs> okay. 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 Next one. Okay, talk to one another. Talk to your, ano, to your activity partner. What, what can we uh, observe from the photo? Okay. Don't tell the person, you look like that. No, don't tell that. Okay. How about this one? Okay. Yeah. Barbecue stick. No, it's a pencil, okay? It's a pencil, okay? Parang may gutom na. Someone is hungry. How about this one? <laughs> this is not a Filipino delicacy, quick, quick. But what can we observe from this one? There's two observations. Diba? In terms of color and, and the emotion. Wow, very good. Very good, group A. How about group B? You're early for recess later, okay? How about this one? The color, and then this one, a, a more difficult one, okay? This one. Uh, color in different direction. Color in different direction, and is it a different fish? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, so one is, uh, what, one is paksil, one is, uh, what? <laughs> Prito, fried. How about this one, lastly? Congested, okay, and then there's a different color and also in terms of... So what are the two things we can observe from all these pictures? So standing out and different direction or in a more um, social way, going against the flow. Okay, so this morning we'll be reading about a text or a story about going against the flow. So we'll be reading from John chapter 16 verses 16 to 33. Wow, we, will, we have a lot of verses. So we can tell Pastor Jojo that this week has, we have read a lot, okay, from the Bible, okay. So if you have your Bibles with you, if you prefer uh, other translation or if uh, you want to read with me in the NLT translation, Okay, so come read with me. One, two, three, go. In a while, you won't see me anymore. But a little while. Wait lang, wait, wait, wait. There's no energy. Come on. Sayang yung ganda ng damit natin. We, 
we put effort in this morning. So, what's the sitting position? What's the reading position again as a teacher? How should we read? Okay, are we are we supposed to slouch? Okay, sit properly. Okay, from the diaphragm. Okay, and not on the throat because you know when we sing later in the key of B, we cannot hit it. Again, again, again. One, two, three, go. Verse 19. Verse 20. Twenty-one. By the way, happy Mother's Day. Yeah. <laughs> Verse twenty-two. That time, so Jesus is teaching his disciple to use his name and whatever they would ask. Verse twenty four to twenty five. Figures of speech. And we'll tell you plainly about the Father. Next. For the Father himself loves you dearly. Yes, I came from the Father. Verse 29. His disciples said, At last! That you know everything. And there's no need to question you. From these we believe that you came from God. So the disciples were enlightened. Verses 31 to 32. Jesus asked, Wow! But time is coming. Indeed, it's here now. Yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. Lastly, I have told you all these so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. But take heart because I have overcome them. Can we read, can we read again this verse loudly? One, two, three, go. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. But take heart because I have overcome the world. Can we just uh, close our eyes and bow our heads and pray? Father God, we thank you today. Thank you, Lord, for the community of faith, Father. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come together in a place like this, Lord, worshiping you, singing songs to you, God, remembering your goodness and faithfulness to each and every one of us. Father, we pray, O oh God, that may you guide us. Holy Spirit, move in the midst of us. Help us to 
to understand what you needed us to learn this morning, oh God. And uh, help us, Holy Spirit, to understand everything, oh God, uh, to search our hearts, oh Lord, and to really learn how can we use your word, oh God, in our lives and in, in reaching out to the people around us. Lord, use me as your vessel only, oh God, um, that, Lord, your word will be uh, taught this morning, oh God, and Lord, we pray, oh God, that May you prepare our hearts and minds, O oh God, in listening and reading, and Lord, and understanding your word. We thank you, Father God, and we bring you back all the praises, all the glory in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Can we give God a clap of praise? Yeah, okay. From Again, from what we have read, okay, uh, we I have shown you pictures on uh, how you are uh, standing out and uh, going against the flow. So from what we have read, our topic for our this morning is to put Jesus first because he can give peace amidst troublesome situations. But that's it. Can we read again? Put Jesus first because he can give us peace amidst troublesome situations. Can I tell the person beside you, troublesome. troublesome. Not you. <laughs> <laughs> so we have read so what's the background of this text okay, it was during the time when before Jesus mentioned these verses he washed the disciples feet okay it was during that time it was a long discourse starting out when Jesus start, uh, washed the disciples feet and they shared the last supper Okay. It was during that time. So Jesus has, has been giving them so many um, uh, lessons. Uh, giving It's like, you know, last will and testament in Tagalog, habilin. Okay? Uh, reminding the disciples of what they would do amidst everything. Now, in our title, we go back. We have to put Jesus first because he can give us peace amidst troublesome situations. But the question would be, is why do I need peace? Can you ask the person beside you? Oh, you agad eh, no? Make it personal. Why do I need peace? <laughs> ah, okay, okay. Look at the person beside you. Look him or her in the eye. Why do I need peace? Uh, don't ask them because I'm here. <laughs> okay? So the question would be, why do I need peace? Okay? As a Christian or uh, someone who, uh, again, the context here is that uh, Jesus was, you know, he just finished washing the disciples' feet. Uh, they ate the Last Supper. Uh, Jesus mentioned about uh, the vine and the branches, you know, and uh, Jesus warned uh, the disciples of how uh, the words hatred would be upon them. Okay, that, and then these verses, uh, uh, Jesus mentioned these verses, and after this, also Jesus uh, pray for his disciples, pray for himself, and pray for the uh, future believers. So it's like a very long discourse of what Jesus wanted to tell them and to remind them of what to expect, what to do, and what to uh, uh, what should be their mindset about it. So Jesus is you know calming their nerves because you know. Uh, Jesus knew that in a few days from this moment that we, he mentioned these verses is that he will be captured and he will have his way to the cross. Okay. Now, the question would be is that for the disciples and for us, why would I need peace? Can you ask the person beside you, do you have peace? Okay. What would the answer be? A superficial answer would be, oh, yes, of course I have. But during troublesome situation, is it easy to have peace? See? And people, when you ask, oh, usually in a gathering or a group, uh, group get-together, you don't discuss about peace, right? You usually discuss about joy, struggles, but you don't ask, do you have peace? Or are you peaceful now? No, you don't usually. Having peace inside of us, especially in troublesome situations, it's not usually part of our conversation, daily conversation or conversations among friends. Okay. Now, uh, I'll go back to the question, why do I need peace? Jesus is very um, uh, straightforward to them that everything of what, what will happen to them, you will experience hatred. And in, in the end, in the last verse, he, he told the disciples that you, I will give you peace because I have overcome. Now, in the lives of the disciples, because they need peace because Christians will always feel misfits in this world. Can you say the word misfits? 
It's as a shell term with you don't belong. You don't fit. You're a misfit. Uh, that's why I showed you a picture of, you know, a standing out color, a yellow among all the blue, a red among all the white. And so this is what Jesus told them. So can you read again verse 20? I tell you the truth, you will weep and mourn over what is going to happen to me. But the world will rejoice, you will grieve, but your grief will suddenly turn to wonderful joy. Jesus is telling them about how he will die. Because in, in, as I've told you, in a while, Jesus will suffer his passion and crucifixion and then death eventually. So Jesus is telling his disciples that you will experience troublesome situation. You will weep, you will mourn. It is going to happen. But while you are weeping, the world is rejoicing. So see how Jesus told the disciples that you will be misfits. Everyone will rejoice because I'm already dead. But you will weep and mourn. So it's a different. It's a misfit. So look at the person beside you. It's a misfit. But Jesus told them that um, you will grieve, but your grief will suddenly turn to wonderful joy. Let's make a more concrete example of this. As a Christian, we are surely a misfit in this world. Don't expect that every when you accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, when you read your Bible, when you obey the words of the Lord, don't ever expect that your life will be full, uh, you know, a bed of roses and everything pinkish and everything abundant and no, you will not experience any problems anymore. No, sorry. If someone will tell you, oh, be a Christian and then your life will be perfect, turn away from that person. That's not the true gospel. It's not the truth. The truth is that when we accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, and from what we have sung, when we decided in our lives that Jesus will be our King, in Tagalog, pag inutos ng hari, hindi pwedeng mabali. It, when the King commanded some, something, it should be obeyed. When we decided that in our lives, it's automatically that we are a misfit in this world. Can you say again the word, the word misfit? Tell yourself, I am a misfit in this world. Because uh, a lot of psychological theories will tell that one of the need one of the needs of a person is the need to belong. Right? That's why we have family, we have friends, we have groups, we have communities. There's a certain need for us to belong to connect. But Jesus is telling the disciples, "No. We need that, but in this world you cannot always find yourself fitting in. You look at the person beside you. Have you experienced that? Why? Some of the practical ways, what are the practical ways that we as Christians would feel misfit? First is how we, uh, we are so different in how we treat people. We have this connotation that if someone is Christian, that person is so kind, right? That's why if you misbehave as a Christian, people will tell you, oh, you're a Christian but you're so bad. Right? Parang in Tagalog, Christian ko pa naman, kaya ugali mo. But the disclaimer would be, being misfit here doesn't mean uh, you're just, you know, your attitude is not right, okay? You know, there's this disclaimer. You know, I feel misfit in this world because nobody loves me. Baka you're, you're not doing your part, okay? Being misfit here is that you're good, you're doing the things, you're obeying God, but still you're a misfit, okay? It's not, you know, because a lot of Christians would say, oh, I'm a Christian, I feel misfit, but you don't treat your, your family, your friends, and everyone around you good, okay? It's not, that, it's not this one, okay? So we, how are we different? How are we misfits? How we treat people. We are commanded to what? We are commanded to love. To love our neighbor as ourselves. But what, the, what is the world telling us? Love yourself. Love yourself. Love yourself. I deserve this. Right? But Jesus commanded us to love one another. From our, from our devotions, diba? In, if it's all possible, live in peace with one another. Do not let the sun down with your anger. Wow, diba? So we are different in how we treat our, uh, our, our neighbors and also even our enemies. The world tells us, when, you, uh, when someone did something wrong to you, take your vengeance. 
But Jesus told us that, no, you love your enemy. If someone throw a stone at you, what will you do? Throw bread in a jar. No. <laughs> uh, my mother would always joke that. Eh, because, <sighs> said, if not, Jesus did not told me to, uh, did not tell me to uh, throw a bread, I will put it in a jar. Okay, uh, God bless you. <laughs> wow. No, it's not like that. We are commanded to love our neighbor, to love our enemies, to treat them as if, you know, when the world tells us, no, uh, 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 assess your right, do everything you can so that you will not be, uh, you know, taken advantage of, no. So we are a misfit in that situation. What else? Oh, I'm so blessed with uh, what the Sister Marge mentioned. Uh, we are a misfit as Christian. Because on how we value our money, how we treat our money. For other people, it will always say, oh, your money, your hard-earned money, just, you know, spend it whatever, however you want it. You deserve it. You work hard for it. But that's the, that, that is what the world will tell us. But what did the Bible told us? What did the Bible tell us about how we should deal our money? We should honor God with our money, with our treasure. Diba? When all the videos in the world, you know, you know, the house tour, the room tour, you know, is focusing us to, you know, really climb up, to really desire things in this world, whatever is the latest gadget, what is the latest design, shoes, bag, everything in the house should be, you know, crystal clear and, you know, updated. The Bible is telling us. To use whatever we have to honor God. Sabi nga ni Ate Jackie, a giving uh, honors God, blesses people, and reaps reward. But the world tells us, when you have your money, reward yourself. Diba? For Christians, we have a long way. We honor God, we bless others, and then hopefully, uh, we pray that in this lifetime, we will reap the reward. But if not, we are glad that we can give, right? So we are a different one. So what else? We are a misfit in this world in how we treat our time. Diba? Why? In the ni sister da yung time. Why? Here in Dubai, if you're working, time is so precious. Every minute counts. Metro, two minutes, one minute. When you report to work, one minute late is still late. And every minute counts because as if uh, because when you're tired from work. All you wanted to do is rest, right? We, can, we all can feel that. But what, so the world is telling us, after you work, you rest. Because you deserve that rest. Don't do any other things. But as Christians, why are we misfit? When we wake up early in the morning of a Sunday morning, and people will ask us, oh, you're off, why are you dressed? I'm going to church. Oh, sayang. You can rest, right? People, are not just going to church, we value our time because, especially, you know, for those who can relate, you can, when we read our Bible early in the morning, while all other else are watching drama and TV series while taking their coffee or waiting for their car lift, we are devoting our time reading the Word of God. So we are a misfit. So we cannot relate to all the kid dramas, all the series that everyone else have finished watching because they have all the time in the world while we, you know, devote our time to God. We devote our time in going to church. We devote our time in attending life groups. We attend our, we allot our time in learning more about the Bible. And not just that, we allot our time when people are having struggles. I want, I, I, I'm not doing good. I'm not feeling good. I want someone to talk to. So for someone who doesn't care about the world, you know, you will be okay tomorrow. Let me sleep. But for Christians, your desire would be, okay, let's meet. What do you want? Uh, what, what are you going through right now? How can I help you? How can I pray for you? We give our time, our time to the people. While the world is telling us, relax, you know, do everything that will, you know, lessen the stress you have. But for Christian, we strive and we go to, or we take advantage of every opportunity to help people. Even if it means taking so much time from, from our precious day. So ask, tell the person beside you, how are you treating your time as a Christian? 
Ha? A Sunday off. If you have a Sunday off, di ba? Wow, Sunday off. I can do everything. But you know, you, you devote your time and going to church, you know. But the Lord honors that. How, how are, what else? How are we misfits in this world? We are a misfit in this world in how we treat our relationships. In the world, he said, be independent. If, you're, if your parents or your family are giving you stress, leave them. We have this cancel um, mentality that if the person is not, you know, giving uh, or giving you anything or it's not beneficial to you, you leave them. But as Christians, what did Jesus told us? To minister to our family, minister to our friends. As much as possible, live with peace in one another. Especially for those uh, who are married, right? We are a misfit because the world is telling us, if you don't love that person anymore, go and find someone else. There are a lot of fish in the sea. Oh, are you going to marry a fish? <laughs> right? If uh, The common line would be, I'm not happy in this relationship anymore. I want to be free. And the world would tell us, yeah, go ahead. A lot of people, you meet other people, lumandi ka lang. <laughs> but what is the Bible telling us? To honor marriage. It doesn't depend on what you feel, but your decision to really continue. Especially for the single people, any single people in the house, all the single ladies. Yeah. When, you're, when, you, uh, when you're approaching your 30, 30s, you have this fear. Oh no, I'm, my age is not included anymore in the calendar days. And when you go past that, people are expecting you, oh, you're nearing your menopause. <laughs> it is as if you're a waste if you are a single. Why? Uh, may asawa, may saya. No, but the world is telling us that if you're a single, it's easy to get someone. Landi lang, okay na. But what does the Bible say? To prioritize purity. Pursue godly relationship. So for single people out here, don't pressure yourselves that you're single. It doesn't mean you're ugly. It doesn't mean you are unlovable. It's that you are in a separate a unique standard that God has placed you to. So don't let the world tell you, ah, oh, you're sayang. You're what a waste. No. Okay? Never tell you. And those parents who have, you know, uh, adolescent kids or, you know, uh, kids who have, or children who are in their, approaching their 20s, tell them, okay, that you will not be complete just because you have relationship. Okay? Your identity is in Christ. Okay? Not just for the single ladies, also for the single men out here. Okay? Be careful because people, uh, you know, women will just, you know, especially if you have work here, probably women will just like you because you're working, you have your visa, you have your salary. Okay? <laughs> Be careful. Because guys will say, Pare, hina mo naman. Oh, you can have two girls with your salary. Wow. <laughs> two girls. <laughs> but the Lord, what, the, what does the Bible tell us? To honor relationship, to prioritize purity, to pursue godly relationships. That's how misfit we are in this world. See, from all the social media posts that we would see, the trending videos, we are a misfit. Because why? We would, ra we would rather, me personally, I would rather be called a waste in this world because I know I am doing treasure and vital movement for the kingdom of god amen, amen. so don't feel that also for for anyone else for that matter we are not a waste and again why would be why would the world call it a waste because we have a different standard we are a misfit we go against the flow the world dictates that if you're 25 get married have kids four and then by 30 50 you have this house you have four cars but no each and every one of us have a different calling from the Lord. So how we value our time, our money, our relationship, how we deal with people should be in the basis of the Bible and not what the world dictates us. Okay? So if you're seated beside your husband or your wife, tell that person, we are a misfit. Yeah? Tell that person beside you. If you're seated with your husband and your wife, look them in the eyes and Again, 
We are a misfit. That the pro na, look, uh, this is your moment. Lagi na kaya sa bahay. I mean, uh, no, 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 no. Okay, look at your husband. If you're seated with your wife and your husband, okay, tell tell your love, your honey bear. We are a misfit, but we fit each other. Tama, okay na. And then tayo move on. To the, why do we need peace? Aside from being a misfit in this world, um, we should expect continuing tension with an unbelieving world. Not only do we stand out in the world, but also we should expect... Can you say the word continuing tension? It's not just this Sunday that the, you're okay, or it's not that this Sunday that people will persecute you at, or tell something bad about you because you're a Christian, but it's a continuing tension because we live in a fallen world and not everyone in this world believes in Jesus or have accepted Jesus. Accept this fact. That's why we needed peace. What are these tensions in this world? Why do we have tension? This is uh, because we are obeying Jesus. We, we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We treat Jesus as our King. We obey everything Jesus says. And But the unbelieving world is out of sync with God, with Jesus, and with the Bible. Okay? So our belief, our faith would often, or... Madalas would often cause ridicule or bashing. Wow, celebrities yan. We have bashers. Why? Because we are different. They don't understand what we believe in. What They don't understand why we have to spend so much time in the ministry, in the church. Or why do we have to tithe? Or why do we have to prioritize God with our money? Why do we have to help the needy people around us? Why do we have to support orphans and, you know, uh, kids? So, it's a very um, given reality for each and every Christian. So, tell the person beside you, it's a continuing tension. Like what I've mentioned before, all the misfits that we have as a Christian, it will continue. So, as a single lady, it's, all, it's not only this Sunday that people would tell, oh, what a waste. It will be a continuous one. Every day or every gathering, people will always ask me, why aren't you married? Why are you going to? Why, are you why do you go to church? Why do you do that? It's a continuing process. It's a continuing tension. For the married people, temptation will not stop this day. It will be every day. It will be here. And with money, with the struggles with money, it's not only this month, but the months to come. Should we all, can we always prioritize God with our money? Can we always uh, uh, glorify God with our relationships, with our time? It's a continuing tension. Accept the fact that people will ridicule us. So tell the person beside you, accept the fact that people will ridicule us. So in the story of the disciples, during the time that Jesus is talking to them, Jesus is telling them, you will experience a lot of hardships. Because during this time, you know, Jesus has already caused so much commotion among the religious leaders and even the Roman Empire. That's why later on, they will captive him, they will uh, no, uh, whip him, uh, uh, make him carry the cross, and then be crucified in the cross and death. So it's a continuous tension. So the question would be, as a Christian, you ask the person beside you, do you experience this continuing tension? Okay, look at the person beside you, come on. With the top on the shoulder, are you, con are you experiencing this continuous tension? If the answer is yes, tell that person congratulations. But if the, but the, if the answer is no, oh no. It means if you are not experiencing tension with this world, it means uh, you are part of this world, right? So for the disciples, he said, uh, we would experience a lot of persecution. What are the samples of persecution among Christians? I think here we just have a problem in terms of permits, right? In terms of gathering. We are so blessed that we can gather in a hotel, uh, hide it under events, okay? But for other countries... 
especially the unreached people group. We call it unreached people group, those who haven't heard about Jesus yet. Missionaries who would go there are risking their lives. Okay? They are everyday missionaries is at risk of, you know, being imprisoned or being uh, punished or to the point of death. So it, we might not feel it here where we are, but the reality of uh, uh, spreading the gospel of Jesus, the salvation, is a very dangerous endeavor. People are being persecuted, missionaries are being threatened to, or imprisoned, you know, or yeah, it's a reality because we have continuing tension with the unbelieving world. Okay. Now, so that is why we have to, um, uh, to, to review us. Why do we need peace from Jesus? It's because Christians will always feel misfits in this world because we should expect, always expect continuing tension with the unbelieving world. And this struggles will always bother us. That's why we need the peace from Jesus. Now, um, again, our topic is that we have to put Jesus first because he can give us peace amidst troublesome situations. So what are the realities given here to review? As Christians, we will have troublesome situations. Okay? Don't blame the church or the pastor that, you know, when I started to be a Christian, a lot of troubles came, came my way. Wow. Okay, it's again, let me remind you, it's a reality. And again, if people would tell you, you know, you have to be Christian so that your life will be perfect, it's a wrong gospel. Be careful and stay away from those people. The reality that is that as Christians or those who are trying their best to really obey Jesus, to really obey the word of God, will have troubles, troublesome situation. Now, now we understand that we need peace from Jesus. But now, why do I need to put Jesus first to have peace? Can I just get peace from other people? Can I get peace? Is it for sale in Dubai Mall, MOE? Can we buy peace? Can things or people around us give us peace? Probably temporarily, but not as much as how can Jesus give, uh, give it to us. So why do we need to put Jesus first to have peace? The answer would be is that the world saw Jesus came down, or the defeat of Jesus when he uh, carried the cross, crucified, and was uh, uh, put to death. That is what, this is what Jesus is telling them. Later on, you will not see me anymore. The world will rejoice. You will weep. So the, the world saw a defeat in the death of Jesus. But what happened after? We need to put Jesus first because what happened is that the tomb was empty and Jesus re resurrected. When Jesus resurrected after three days, he has, uh, he has the ultimate victory over everything. Only Jesus did this. He has won the victory. Despite, so as an as a assurance for each and every one of us, the, the disciples included in this story, Jesus is assuring us that whatever we go through, despite all the struggles we would face, we are not alone. So tell the person beside you, whatever we will face, with a tap on the shoulder, brother or sister, whatever we will face, we will not be alone. Why? Because Jesus has the ultimate victory. So if we are going through troublesome situations and we are afraid and we are anxious and we, you know, it's, it, it's causing us so much, what does it mean? It means we are not trusting in Jesus enough to go through whatever troublesome situations. Again, let me remind each and every one of us, life as a Christian it's not a bed of roses. It's not a perfect life. It's a life filled with ridicule, filled with being misfit, and filled with tension. And you na lang Christian. With that, I don't want to be a Christian anymore. No. We may face that kind of situation, but Jesus has assured us that if we will use his name, that's why we pray in Jesus' name. 
everything we ask God the Father, we end it up in Jesus' name. Because Jesus has given us that power. And with this story, few moments after this is the, what happened? It's the coming of the Holy Spirit. Right? So whatever we go through, we, our journey will be filled with peace from Jesus and guidance from the Holy Spirit. We have that kind of weapon in us. That's why when we face troublesome situations, we, we can just say, come on, bring it on. I have Jesus with me, and I can pray in Jesus' name. So, the question would be, this is, would be my challenge for each and every one. What can you do this coming week to be against the flow of the world? Because the world is telling us, be part of the trend, follow the trend, be with the trend. But as a Christian, having, after hearing all this uh, message I have about God's word, the question would be, what can we do this coming week to be against the flow of the world? Can you look at the person beside you and ask him, what can you do this coming week? So it's a reminder for each and every one of us to stand out, to stand out and go against the flow of this world. But still, reaching out people to Jesus. We won't stand out because we are bad or we are annoying, but we will stand out because we are following the steps of Jesus and we are guided by the Holy Spirit. Can we all stand up? This is not an easy, it might sound funny, it might sound simple, but this is the reality of each Christian. Am I right? We might, but the good news is that we have the peace from Jesus. We have the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And look around us. Look around us. Look at the people. Look around the people. Say hi to them. Yeah. We may be misfits in this world, but look at our brothers and sisters. We are part of one community of faith. So, can we go around and top like five people or six people around before we pray and tell that brothers and sister, you are not a misfit here. Can we go around? Can we go around? Can, you, can we make it 15? You will not stop. 15. You're not a misfit here. We are a family. We are a community. That is why we go to church. Diba? That is the blessing of going to church and God's design of church. Right? Because we might be misfits in this world, but the community of faith that God has designed is also our source of peace. That's why in Hebrews it says there, don't forget about meeting together. Because it's not about attending church, you know, or showing the world your outfit. But it's more of showing up, not just for pastor. It's showing up for the people around us. That, you know, hey, I've been through so much, but I woke up this morning and I went here to church so I can encourage you. So can you tell the person beside you, I woke up today, I went here so I can encourage you. Again, tell the person beside you, you're not a misfit here. But we are one community of faith. Let's um, close this in prayer with praying for us as, as we, for guidance, as we go through troublesome situation. And also, let us also say a prayer for all the missionaries of the world who are reaching out the unreached people group. Let's pray that they, for God's guidance and safety as they bring the 
good news of salvation to the people who haven't heard about Jesus yet. Let's close our eyes and bow down our heads and pray. Father God, we thank you that even though we might be misfits in this world, even though we are experiencing continuous tension from this world, thank you, Lord, that we belong in your kingdom, that we are your children. And Lord, we thank you for your design of the church, a community of faith, oh God. Not just the building, but Lord, the people around us. Thank you for your word, oh God, that reminded us that Lord, when we have you in our lives, we can face anything. When we desire to follow you, all other things are secondary. And Lord, we pray, oh God, this morning, may you help each and every one of us. Give us the strength we need, the determination to continuously stand out as a light to this darkened world. To continuously go against the flow of what this world dictates. And to follow your word, oh God. And to share your word to the people around us. Lord, we pray for the missionaries all over the world, oh God. Lord, we thank them, oh God, for obeying your call to bring the good news of salvation to the people who hasn't heard you yet. And Lord, we pray, oh God, Lord, we know that their lives is are our stake, oh God. They are in dangerous endeavor, oh God. We pray, oh God, may you guide them. Lord, we pray, oh God, for open doors of opportunity to share your word. Lord, we pray, oh God, for favors either from government and the countries where they are, or Lord, favor from connections that they would have in order to really uh, spread your word, to teach your word to them, Father. Lord, we pray, oh God, may you guide them, their family, oh God. And Lord, that they too will have the peace, oh God, that whatever troublesome situations they are in, oh God, in reaching out the world, Lord, they have the peace, oh God, just like we do. Lord, we thank you for your design of the church. Lord, we pray, O oh God, that as we go through difficult situations in our lives, personally and as a church, Lord, we pray, O oh God, may you guide us. Holy Spirit, give us guidance and conviction to do what is right, to follow your word, Father, so that in the end, your name, O oh God, will be lifted up, your name will be glorified in this place. We pray. Thank you, Father God. We bring you back all the praises and all the glory in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Everybody say. Everybody say. Amen and amen.